right. Shall we get started with some questions? Let's do it. Let's go. I know a lot of people have just been interested to learn a little more about each of your backgrounds. So I figured we'd start with the artist, Bobby. And before we even get to the digital art, tell us a little bit about how you first got into creating art. And Mm -hmm. we can go from there as you transition to digital art. Um, Because I'm just interested in, like, how did you become an artist in the first place? Yeah, it, it. I think it's kind of just like how everybody does. It's just like one of those things where you're sketching, doodling, and then, you know, your friends in class, especially when you're in school, your friends in class are like, oh, that's cool. And to you, it's kind of just, it's a scratch. It's like a scribble. It's nothing. Yes. Um, then I was doing like uh, graffiti names. Like we used to call it bombing. I don't know if they still call it bombing. I haven't really gone too much like in involved with street art, like graffiti lately, but um you know, like, we used to do that in school with uh, markers and stuff, and I used to do, like, people's names, and it was just really fun, and then I ended up transitioning into Canvas maybe later on in life, maybe, you know, work nine to fives to get in the way, and I had to figure out, I I just wanted a better thing. School wasn't for me. I didn't really, uh, I didn't study art in school. I studied history of art, but yeah, everything was just self-taught. And then I discovered oil paint and that was it. It was such a game changer because I was just like fascinated. I guess like it's one of those things where like I have a a, a personality that if I find interest in something, it's like I go full force, like blinders on and I'm like in it. So that's kind of what happened with that. And then I bought all these like paint mediums and brushes and I started using my like just palette knives, no brushes. I would paint with rags and no palette wow. knives. Like, yeah, it was just crazy. Um, I just like was just like down this rabbit hole. And <laughs> then uh, when I was living in San Diego, my I was living with my brother and my bedroom was just paint was yeah. everywhere. Like it's, so cool. it was so crazy. Like I used to... Um, also stretch canvas for artists too so i had a i bought like a little seven inch miter saw and i was cutting wood and there was sawdust everywhere and i was sleeping on that like oh my god yeah and i just didn't like i just felt like there was something more than just working nine to five but that was always getting in the way and i had so much more fun working with my hands and like not necessarily being told what to do like my my personality I would take a job, work my butt off till I got into a position where like I didn't have to like take any order from nice. somebody else, you know, but then I also got very bored of that and I just had to figure out a new way out. So then I went back 100% into painting after I started doing canvases, um, managed an art store, worked my wow. way up there super fast and then I got bored of it again (laughs) and then I was just like you know the pandemic came and I was still um stretching canvas for artists when I came back to LA like when I moved back to LA because I'm from here and I moved to San Diego for five six years when I came back um the pandemic happened like two years after and then since I was starting to make new network friends and new artist friends I started um stretching canvas for those people and then when the store shut down, I was still getting hit up for canvas. Like it was even more so wow. because I couldn't go to the art store to buy it. So I eventually decided that right then and there that I would quit my my job and focus back into the art 110% because of, it's just like a feeling I was getting with art and creating and helping. And wow. that was it. Like I, I, you know, started doing that, started going full time. And then I started selling my artwork more when I decided to put it up for auction. So I started putting my artwork up for auctions instead of having, you know, people uh, ask me, how much is this? How much is that? I would just put it up for auction, whatever people um, offered me. If it was the highest bid at the end of the 24 to 48 hours, boom, it's sold. So I started doing that for a while. And then I started reaching out to people on Instagram, like looking for shows. Once uh, LA started opening up again. I reached out to a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of galleries and um, managers and stuff. And then I um, ended up meeting this artist through that. 
and we did a show in Santa Monica and uh that's where I met Brian and that was it like once Brian like we started talking about art you know and Brian's like he has such a um an easy go personality so we pretty much like connected pretty easily like if we knew each other and when we started talking about NFTs like that subject started getting up brought up um Oh man, like it was such a game changer <laughs> hearing his perspective. Wow. Uh, from like his angle. And he's like, I was just like, whoa, like I didn't hear this before. Like I thought I, I like this is what I needed to hear. I needed to hear yeah. like like the truth basically. Like it's not, it's a business. Uh, and you know, it's like, yeah, people are selling artwork and things like that, but this is a legitimate business. You have assets, you have stocks, like the it's a business you know and it, and you need you can't it's hard to run it yourself so once we started talking about that um you know uh, it wasn't so much that i wanted to take pictures of my art already and then post it it was something that i wanted to yeah. you know build a community off of like me and brian had discussed and yeah so i you started using my wife's ipad and i started using my finger because i didn't have the apple pencil <laughs> and then um my brother dropped off like this regular pencil from Amazon and then I started using it and then that there you go like I was waking up like at six in the morning and putting that iPad down like at 10 o'clock at night like wow. for like every day because I was learning like the entire program um the rabbit went through a bunch of different changes and yeah then here we have it today like what it looks like now with all those little attributes and that's so literally that's my first legitimate character wow that's amazing i didn't even realize that the venture into digital art was for this project rather than vice versa that's such a unique thing to have yeah, And I love how you mentioned it was sort of driven by this desire to form a community. So it wasn't like your art necessarily drove it or your venture into NFTs drove it, but like using your art as a means of forming community. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. It, it, and, it, you know, it was more Brian's kind of like, yeah, you know, uh, what he had mentioned because like to me i didn't understand it i was really fascinated with the idea of nfts i mean Mm -hmm. i really wanted to get into it but um it was just so random you know the universe works in mysterious ways that i ended up meeting someone who was just as interested in the nft space but from a different perspective so it was just like crazy crazy I think one thing I took from that is both your passion and that it was so self-taught. So I'd love to hear from Brian a little bit about sort of a non-traditional path. It wasn't like you were trained to uh, be in business with NFTs, but how did you uh, get to that place of working as what is now the manager and, you know, complete business side of the Bobby Rabbits project. Yeah, that was really cool kind of hearing um, Bobby's evolution through kind of where he started and how he ended up here. And it'll be kind of cool to hear like how our paths intersect. I mean, for me, I was out in, I mean, I lived in Los Angeles for five years, starting from like 2015 until the pandemic began. And like, I, I'm not an artist, Um, I was working in finance. So like my background comes in the form of like, you know, I had to take all these licensing exams to learn about, you know, how companies raise money and like what stocks are, you know, like a lot of that is like learning about the in the United States, we have, you know, the SEC and FINRA, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. Mm -hmm. And that gave me a lot of perspective on like how and why stocks exist the way that they do. And so from my perspective, like I had this understanding about how to make a business, you know, how to how to start a business, like how to create like a large business and how to scale it upward. So most small, small business owners, you know, they get money from friends and family and then they, they start their thing or whatever. But at some point when you want to become like a huge company, like the only route to do that right now, you know, until I learned about NFTs, I'll say is that, you know, you got to you got to either take out a massive loan from the bank or this really popular way to do it, which is where stocks come from, is is becoming a publicly traded company. So let's say that, you know, 
I wanted to start a clothing company, but I need like a million dollars because part of my idea is like we need, you know, we need to hire all these people. We need storefronts. We need factories. We need to buy the materials, all these things. Like instead of going to the bank and being like, hey, guys, can I borrow a million dollars? Like I could just like say, you know what? I'm willing to give up a big ownership stake in my company. Let's go ask all these random people for, you know, to contribute. And so you sell a share of stock in an, in an initial public offering for like, you know, $100 a share. And you sell a million dollars worth of that. All that first amount of money like raises money for the business. So that, you know, that creates a million dollars that we have to use to, you know, buy materials to make clothes and hire people and do all these things. The people that are buying those shares of stock, the reason that they do it is because there's an expectation that we are going to, you know, do what we said we're going to do and use that money wisely as an investment to create something more valuable. And so when I started to get into this NFT situation, I was working with an, another friend who's an artist, you know, he, Bobby and I's mutual friend. And, you know, I met Bobby and I'm starting to interact with all these artists and, you know, their traditional way of making money is they got to go to these galleries and they got to sell paintings one at a time. And um, I started to pay attention to these NFT communities where you have, you know, a single artist that you leans on technology a little bit to be able to create thousands of these pictures um, that are part, you know, that's their art, their hand-drawn attributes. We're just using a computer program to do a little Mr. Potato Head and create, you know, all these combinations of them. But it's more than just the art to me. I saw them as like shares of stock. It's like ownership in the Bobby Rabbit's brand. Like we could use that money that we're raising from the mint to do something bigger. Like you have what are called these rug pullers where they raise all that money and then like, yeah, great. You guys make a hundred thousand dollars off of minting your collection, but then what, you know, right. all these rugs that we're seeing in the industry right now are people that they get that money, but they don't have a plan with it. So that's a huge red flag for any other NFT project is like, that's why there's a roadmap. Like you're like, well, what are you going to do with my money to make my, to make my NFT worth more? So for us, like, that was kind of what I tasked myself with. You know, I met with Bobby, and that's what we talked about. Like, you know, it's, it's about so much more than, like, the single sale of a single piece of art because what we're doing is we're creating this community that will be our shareholders. Like, we're going to, you know, all these people are essentially our boss. Like, we're, we're borrowing their money, and, and they are expecting us to do stuff that makes their piece of art worth more. So what are we going to do? You know, well, A, like, these people share in that responsibility as much as we do so we're going to put stuff to a vote you know do you want us to spend money yeah. to, to make clothing do you want us to spend the money to make a video game do you want us to spend the money to create a cartoon like we have all these ideas but we do have to put them to a vote because at the end of the day the people that own the nfts are the people that you know their money is on the line like we right. appreciate everybody that minted because they are handing their money over to us and trusting that we're going to do something important or valuable with that. Um, so, you know, that's the conversation that Bobby referred to that different perspective is, you know, it's about so much more than just creating a cool piece of art. You know, we have to do something yeah. above and beyond. And that's when you hear people saying like, well, what utility does this NFT have? Like that's the utility is like, you have to do something to make the brand valuable so that other people want to buy the rabbits from you. Right. Like the, the reason someone's going to be willing to spend a thousand dollars on a rabbit that you paid a hundred to mint is because they're expecting that to be worth a thousand dollars. So like, you know, how, how we plan to do that is to create this big brand and to create all these other things and then share our profits. So, you know, if we end up going out and we make a cartoon and we get, you know, a million dollars in advertising deals to, you know, have our car our cartoon playing on Adult Swim with, you know, big brand advertisements that, you know, pay us money the way a traditional company would work, like we're going to convert a fraction of that profit and send it back to the people who bought the rabbits because we borrowed their money to do this. Wow. I love how you really throughout this entire thing have emphasized the role the community, the community plays in making decisions and holding and benefiting from this project. And I think one really amazing way we've seen this is actually a member of the community who was, just like any of us, a listener, a follower of the project ends up being what we now know is an integral part of the leadership team, and that's Corn Pop. So I'd love to hear Corn Pop a little bit about how you both first got involved in this project, and also a little bit about your background in coding and how that's played into your role here. Sure. 
Um, yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a crazy story about getting into this specific project. Um, I had my own project, and it was really just a project to learn some some different coding things to kind of learn the blockchains a little bit. And I chose Solana because that's the cheapest way I saw to do it. And mm-hmm. I really liked how fast their network was, how affordable it was. And I saw it as the future of NFTs. Um, yeah. And so I so I dove into that and, you know, I made, I drew, uh, in fact, I drew a bunny of my own <laughs> and then created, I don't know, something like 10,000 different renditions of it. <clears throat> By no means was it a good drawing. Uh, <laughs> But it was something I could use to then, you know, go through the process of getting a Mint engine up and running. And I created a Twitter for it and was on Twitter one day and popped up this Bobby Rabbits Club. And I was like, hey, look, another bunny. Let's go check it out. And I hopped in I hopped in the discord and right away, I think both Bobby and Brian were there and they're like, what's up, man? And they were like really pushing for I think it was their hundredth member at that time. Nice. And of course, I was like ninety eight. And then the the ham lord ended up getting the, the hundred <laughs> spot. Um, but I really like, you know, they had this energy. And I was like, I've been doing this all my on my own, like creating a website, creating a mint engine, creating the art. And I'm not an artist. I'm not really a website designer. I'm more focused on the actual technology behind it. Wow. And so I was like, you know what? I could hang out here. This is fun. Like, I, there's energy here. This propels me to keep working on my project. And, like, my friends don't understand NFTs. I've explained it to them. They're just <laughs> dense. I mean, they're older. So, you know, I'm, I'm 31, so my friends are in that age range. And it's still, like, it's a technology that a lot of older people don't get. They don't understand. They, they, they see people spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on art. And so, yeah. you know, I just wandered into this this random Discord that looked like really cool art and found a home. And, you know, I offered to do some promotion. You know, I just said, hey, I'd like to spread the word about this. Um, so I just I started tweeting about it, um, started talking to Brian and Bobby about, like, how they were going about it, what engine they were using, if they were building it themselves, how they generated their art. Because this was all stuff I was doing at the time. Wow. And um, pretty much we, we got to where um, the technology was working for both of us. And, uh, and then the, the people who put out the main engine that we have to modify for our use um, yeah. completely flipped the script on everybody. They just completely dropped the ball. <sighs> they were just like, uh, yeah, we're not going to use this anymore use this and it didn't work the same way wow um so i just like dove right into figuring it out at this point it was still for my own project yeah. but like i was talking with brian at the same time and and then brian was like you know i've got i'm, I'm trying to network and do all this other stuff you know you seem like you have a good grasp of what's going on and how to figure this out maybe we can work together on this and i kept plugging away you know not really you know it's just I didn't know him that well at that point. So it was, uh, it was me just kind of plugging away for my own benefit, but also if I could help him out along the way, why not? You know, it's, it, his community has been good for me and, and I'll, uh, figured I'd help as well. And it got to the point where I figured wow. it out and they were like, Hey, do you want to come on and, and do the development for us? Wow. And, uh, and I said, sure thing, buddies. And here we are today. Wow, that's really incredible and just speaks so much to the nature of this community and the energy that all three of you in the leadership has brought from the very outset. Um, I, I think that one thing also that Corn Pop noted that I've, I found very intriguing was there's this energy coming from you guys. But even before we've been introduced to the project, there's a certain energy from this artwork that brings a lot of people in when they haven't heard of the actual people behind Bobby Rabbits yet. That's the first thing that they saw. But there's something about the rabbit itself that really captures a lot of hearts and a lot of attention. And I was wondering if Bobby could speak a little bit to the creation of this character whether 
a rabbit is something new, something he's used before, and just what aspects of your personality or what characteristics and traits are you trying to give to this rabbit that have really been so um, amazing and magnetic to the community? I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, the rabbits are... Okay, so basically uh, when Brian had told me like, hey, you know, like let's let's do this project and, you know, I'll... Gonna, I'm gonna do my part. Um, you do your part, and I was like, "What do I need?" He's like, "You need a an iPad and a, and a Apple Pen." And I was like, "Well, I got the iPad and I got Procreate." And he's like, "We're fifty percent ready to go. <laughs> like, now we just need the art." And I was like, "Okay." So I started like thinking and thinking. Like I was thinking and not doing. Like I started to. It started to become like a procrastination where. I couldn't even start because I was afraid to start because I'm afraid I was afraid I put so much like emphasis on the idea of like creating something that I wasn't even necessarily having fun doing it. Wow. And I mean, that's what I do. I like paint. Like I'm an artist. Like I, it's hard for me to like sit down and zone in because I was <laughs> overthinking it, overthinking it. And then my wife was like, you just need to get a piece of paper out and a pencil and start from your roots like you need mm. to really start from like ground zero all over again 101 so I did that like I sat down on the kitchen table pulled out a piece of paper and a pencil started sketching away and then um so it's funny because like most of my characters that I would draw are kind of scary you know like <laughs> they're kind of like scary little creatures with like bulgy eyes and like alienish and it's very like um like old school kind of graffiti um character types where it's not just the the words or letters it's kind of like like um i don't know kind of just like extreme like the characteristics are very extreme so that's kind of what i was doing and then i was like no this looks too much like a like a mummy or this is this mm -hmm. or maybe i'm trying to think too hard and then it just started to flow, like thinking about my childhood, thinking about um, my family. And like, uh, we used to watch a bunch of cartoons when we were kids. And okay. we, I grew up in a family of seven. So I have four sisters and two brothers. And we used to watch cartoons a lot. And, you know, like the Animaniacs. Yeah. Uh, a lot of like the Disney Channel cartoon, like Disney cartoons. Um you know, and all that stuff started to, like, flood in and then, like, started to pour out. And, yeah, like, eventually the rabbit kind of came, too. And it was cool that I had the rabbit looking a certain way because it kind of went through transitions. If you would have seen it from before, I put it out onto social media or even sent it to Brian. Like, it's it's very different. Like, there's a lot of details. Wow. That I'm but it ended up becoming into something what it is today, right? But... I did have the character, but then I also wanted to, like, have that personal, like, touch. Like, I wanted it to be genuine also. So that's when I had, um, you know, I was thinking about my myself and, like, who I am and, like, what I've overcome. And, um, you know, like, a lot of, like, those feelings started to come out, more emotional feelings. Like, mm. um, you know, that's where the, the um, stitches on the head came from i was mentioning it earlier this morning yeah and the stitches over the heart it's just like uh my like mental health like just making sure that you know i've gone through that i had some things in my family that's very very like near to me as far as like you know mental health is a big not an issue but it's a big deal you know like yeah what we've, what we've gone through as kids up until now um and then, like, you know, like, having, like, lo losing loved ones and things like that. Yeah. That's where the heart was. And I just wanted it to be deeper, a deeper meaning rather than we're just putting out an NFT, you know, rather yes. than we're just putting out a character that's attractive um, and cool. Like, if this is going to be something that I want to represent me in a sense, like, my art is very different from the NFT space, like, I'm yeah. kind of just like getting my feet wet with this character, but I also don't just want to do it just to do it. 
And the fact that, you know, the passion that Brian brings to the table, knowing that, you know, he's not messing around. Like, we're going to do this project. We're going in full force. Like, I wanted to have something solid and something to be proud of. And when I presented it, it was like, I didn't have to, like, feel like I don't regret anything. You know, some people like it. Some people don't. But it's that's just art in general, you know. And I, I really enjoyed the process when I got it down. And that's kind of like how it happened. I, I, it was just me thinking about like being very into my childhood, trying to think of certain memories and something fun and, and uh, relatable, especially that that was that was very important, something very relatable to everybody. Yeah, I think you really succeeded in that. A lot of the conversations in the discord have shown how much meaning behind it resonates. Yeah. I think another thing that um, maybe not the general community knows it, about this project is like when we first started the Discord, like a lot of things were moving very fast, mm-hmm. and I didn't understand. I didn't know anything about NFTs really a couple months ago, and so I had wow. to like, like research and learned about the generative art process and kind of like I made this silly little like PDF that I sent to Bobby and a couple other artists to kind of explain like the philosophy behind drawing generative art. And so, yeah. I mean, he had, he had the rabbit down, like we had the bodies um, in different colors and stuff. And we had a few different facial expressions at first. But when we started the Discord and through the first several hundred members, like the traits were not there yet. Like, we, wow. I think he, I, I'm just assuming, but I'm sure, you know, some of the traits came from suggestions. And I'm sure we that Bobby was able to feed off of the energy of the group as he kept drawing. Because like every like couple days or every week or so. Like, I would check our shared Dropbox. Um, he would text me and be like, yeah, I just dropped some more traits in there. And I'd pull it up and I'd run the software to generate more rabbits. And it was so exciting every time I did that because, like, you know, one day I woke up and we had, like, you know, all the gold the gold grill and the, rain, the rainbow grill and the diamond grill. Like, when, like, those were all, those all came later. Like, we already had people in the Discord talking when those traits showed up in the Dropbox and I was able to generate it. And so, like, the rabbit, like, I got to watch it evolve through him sending over new traits that I could throw into the engine to generate new more rabbits. And like the final drop he sent me, there was like so many new shirts and like clothes and attributes. And like the Afro rabbit came later with like the, the Woodstock bandana and a bunch of these traits. Um, and then like the golden rabbits and the silver rabbits, the ones that are kind of shiny and, you know, those came way later, the halo. And then we even ma- created the ones with the monocles we created. Like that was like one of the very last things we did was no people, way. people that people that sponsored us, like financially supported the project from the very beginning. There was, there's only eight of them. We have like the elite eight. So we made mm-hmm. eight monocle. Well, we, we made the monocle trait and then I just generated a bunch of random rabbits and we just picked eight of them and gave those out to our sponsors. So whenever uh-huh. you see one with the little golden monocle, that's like somebody that that you know financially supported us from the beginning so that's kind of like what that trait represents but it was cool to have that happening at the same time as the community was being built versus having the whole thing ready to go and then getting the people together it kind of it fed off of each other wow i didn't realize that that really is remarkably special because it just shows how much the community has been integral to the project i'd love to hear from all three of you, if there are any specific traits or characteristics or accessories that you guys like the most and why? I'll go first, I guess. My like my P- my profile picture right now with like the hoodie and the backwards hat. Yeah. Like, for, for some reason, I just like some of the more simple traits because I can relate to them. It's like actually clothing that I would wear. Um, but yeah, like other than that, like like Tyler and like Corn Pop and myself we both make hip-hop music like that was one of my that's one of been a passion of mine for a long time that you know I used to mess around with and you know never really that never turned into like a big career or anything for me but you know the, hip, yeah. the hip-hop community is like something that's always been near and dear to me so when we started getting those gold grills and like the gold chain rabbit and stuff I was like I need one of those so that that's those are always awesome. cool and then obviously like the king crown the crown rabbit is super sweet but other than that, I just like the simple ones, like that that white hoodie and the red backwards hat on mine. Like, I have that same outfit somewhere in my closet. <laughs> I love that. I think uh, that's so funny, man. I'm laughing at what Brian's saying. It's so funny. Um, 
you know, like for me, I, I, one of the things that I was excited about when I did, and I don't even know if anybody noticed that because uh, no one's mentioned it, I don't think, but um, some of the, tr- some, like some of the outfits and traits, I wanted to kind of give it a little bit of like a nod to, you know, street artists and um, graph and, and stuff. And so I did like those like, goggle looking things um that have like the no you know no friends no hearts no likes you know stuff like that that's the banksy uh that's from one of the banksy pieces and then you know the 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 famous banana shirt like that's (laughs) warhol and um another artist i did um keith herring with the dog uh these are all just like little like you know um kind of like a little thing for those people like those are kind of my, those are my favorite artists you know in a way i'm trying to like give a shout out to them through this project um but one of the the vests i don't know if you uh if anyone's familiar with uh the movie the warriors warriors and, come out yeah. Play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so um you know i like that movie you know it's such a uh, old school like graffiti like wild style type of movie and um so that vest that red and black vest that i don't know if anybody has it yet or maybe they do somewhere um but that's from that movie the warriors and i was like really excited about that and i was thinking man everybody's gonna get this like everybody's gonna (laughs) understand where this is coming from and no one mentioned it at all (laughs) i was bummed out (laughs) I was like, oh, man, maybe it's not that cool or noticeable, you know? It's kind of like whatever. Um, But a lot of the traits that I added, um, you know, they're, like, typical, like, uh, relatable everyday um, traits. Um, But, yeah, I think the shirts were and the goggles were something that I kind of wanted to give a little bit of a a touch and, and show my appreciation for the artists that, um, got us into different places like there hasn't really been a big art movement um recently i i feel like yeah. pop art might have been the biggest one leading up until now um but i think digital art is starting to get its respect and yeah. i didn't really pay attention to too much digital art i mean it's crazy because we all play most of us play video games right and that's the form of digital art to me and yeah. we kind of just take it for granted so I think it's pretty awesome that this space, you know, it is a little difficult to, to succeed in, but it's pretty awesome that this space is giving those people a chance, like digital artists, a chance, photographers even, a chance to really succeed and, and um, see the fruits of their labors, you know, like it's very, it's very cool to see that happening. But yeah, these, those traits were kind of my way of giving you know, a little bit of respect to the the artists from before me, you know, laying down the the groundwork for us to, like, succeed. Wow. I didn't realize that looking at the bunnies at first. And it's just another amazing part, how it's it's built from the people before us and going toward the community that we're building. Corn Pop, do you have any favorite traits and why? Well, I, uh, Bobby stole my thunder. (laughs) Uh, because that that warrior's vest is one that I do not have, and I am on the hunt for. Because <laughs> that that movie is, if, if you haven't seen that movie, you need to go see that movie because wow. it is a great movie, and it was a big part of me growing up. And like, it spoke to like the rebellious side of myself, and it's just it's such it's such a great movie that it resonated with me when I saw. I didn't even see like. I didn't even see that it was called the warrior's vest and I didn't know that's what it was an homage to, but I I saw the vest um, in some of the layers and I was like, Ooh, and then I saw that it was called warrior's vest and I was like, he gets it. Um, So that, that's the one that I don't have that I really want. I love the crown. I also don't have the crown. Um, But the, the, the ones that I do have that I really love are the flannels and yes. the twisted ears. Yes. Both those of those are so much fun. Are, yeah, those those are, are awesome. my uh everyday wardrobe flannels. <laughs> flannels and and you have twisted ears, but. Yeah. <laughs> um but no, those are those are the two and I 
and I one of one of the first rabbits I got had the arrested flannel, and that one is. I use I use a couple of them across social media, and I keep one of them special to me that I just look at from time to time. I'll just oh. open up my wallet and take a peek at them. I love that. It's kind of funny that, like, the way you said that, it's like, I remember in the 90s, I used to have one of those, like, one of my first wallets when I was a kid. I, they, they used to come with those clear plastic things that you could slide, like, you know, your little yearbook pictures in or whatever. Sure. <laughs> so. I think I had a girlfriend in like fourth grade and like she gave me one of her little like, you know, fourth grade cheerleading ones. And, you know, used to slide pictures of like people in your wallet. And I just knew that like my dad did that with his family. So I just like needed like random pictures of my friends and stuff. Now we have like digital wallets with like rabbit pictures in there that we look. (laughs) So I just never made that connection before. But I guess it's like, you know, now we have, you know, we got pictures in our wallets, but digitally. I never thought of that. (laughs) That's so great. The the fact that the phone can show them too makes a, a huge difference, I think, because if it's just sitting on your computer, I mean, I, I know everybody's not like me and spends all their time at the computer, you know, either you know, coding or, or other things that are producing music. Like I spend a lot of time on my computer, so for me it's fine, but to be able to pull it out whenever and just kind of look at this collection of art I have on my phone and I can look through all of it at any point is is really awesome and it's something unique to the nft space now yeah on that note we did have a question from digital photobot and there are two really valuable ones that i think the community will want to hear and the first is for a piece oh shit oh i'm still in this sorry i thought i got lost can you hear me still yes you're you're still here I apologize. Um, But the first question is, what would be the most valuable piece of advice for an artist getting into the NFT game? And I want to hear this both from the perspective of the artwork, the business, and the coding, because I know all three play a big role in the success. Mm. Well, I I guess I can start from the the coding aspect. Um. It's, it's, they're, it's getting easier, I will say, to put together NFT projects. Um, you don't have to be a full-blown, you know, coder to, to do it anymore. Um, yeah. It is nice to have some of that knowledge uh, because things go wrong and you want to be able to understand what is happening or why it's happening to be able to fix it quickly. Um, and I will say that the NFT space is a little dangerous for artists because of all the scamming that goes on. Um, Mm. And the way to do it independently, the way you have to set it up is you, you basically have to trust the person you have programming it um, because they have access to, they may not have access to all the, the funds that you make from it, but they definitely Mm -hmm. have access to direct those funds elsewhere during mint, or they may even have access to those funds. So uh, what I would warn is like, be very, very cautious about who you give access to. And, and I would strive to learn a little bit so that you can look over some of what they're doing and say, that's not my wallet address. What are you doing? Yeah. Or, or things like that. And for anybody in our discord, if you have any questions in terms of, you know, is this person going to screw me over? Is, should I be giving them this information? Ask, because I'll be the first to tell you whether to trust that person or not based on the information they're giving you. So use, use us as a resource too. I mean, I'm sure, Brian will ask answer any questions you have about, you know, setting up the business, uh, looking for opportunities, all the work he does, he'll he'll answer. He's very transparent, and I know Bobby is the same way. If you have an art question, you know, ask him. He'll he'll be happy to share his knowledge. So, let us be a resource to you. You know, once once you're a part of this, you're, you know, you're in. You're in with us. We're we're here to support you as much as you support us. Um, so that that's where I'll leave it off. Thank you. 
Yeah, we actually have uh, an ankle monitor on Corn Pop, so <laughs> when he disappears with our mint money, we'll go scoop him up <laughs> down Turks and Caicos. Uh, so you know how many times I've been to McDonald's this week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I will. That is a good point. Like that was definitely a big thing at the beginning, which is, I mean, again, like I didn't know much about the NFT space when I got into this back in like November, December. But like the other artist that was a mutual friend to me and Bobby's kind of like tasked me with doing it. And at first we were just going to straight up go to OpenSea and like take a picture of this guy's painting and then upload it to OpenSea. And they have a way to do that there where you don't have to write your own code. Um, and as soon as I started realizing that the way that we wanted to do it, which involved building a big community and making them shareholders and having a little more control over the smart contract and how this stuff, you know, worked together, um, I was just like, dang, I guess I'm going to have to learn how to code because, you know, there's websites like Fiverr where you can hire programmers that you've never met to build this stuff for you. But it's just super risky. Like I got that advice from other people that were in the space is like, you know, you can't just hire some random person off the internet to like write a smart contract for you because they have access to like redirect funds, you know? So, um, I kind of took it upon myself to watch a bunch of YouTube videos. So my advice, you know, anybody starting out, like there's a good, um, there's some good groups of people. Um, another project called Stractors, like kind of helped us out with some like questions about, these this programming stuff but there's a program called metaplex um and there's a program called hashlips which are very commonly used in this generative art space because it's pretty much you know this website called github and it's like people put pre-built packages of code up there and you just need to know enough to like go swap stuff out like delete the you know the name of the project field and write the name of your project and Stuff like that, you know, copy and paste your wallet address and the default space where the wallet address goes. But like Corn Pop mentioned, like it's good to have somebody that understands like the, you know, the the gadgets and like, you know, the little cogs that are working behind all of that in case something goes wrong, which inevitably it does. Yeah, they they know where to go and find it. I mean, that's when I first realized Corn Pop was like somebody we needed to potentially look into, like getting involved on a deeper level was, you know, I was running this. Pro, this project on the on the test network which uses fake solana so that you can like you know you can try you can build your own project and deploy it using a test network with fake solana to make sure that it works before you spend real money and my pictures were not showing up on the other end and so i was like reading through all these threads about why that might be and apparently the metadata of each rabbit so I, just a little side note, every NFT is basically a two file thing. You obviously have the picture file, but then there's a file that all of them are a pair. They have a, 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 a data file that goes with your picture mm. that, you know, creates the smart contract. It says, you know, what attributes are in here? Where does the money go from royalties? Um, you know, what, what, you know, that's how you interact with an NFT that makes it more valuable than just having a JPEG um, is that okay. data file. The problem was we had a thousand individual data files for each rabbit and I would have had to go in there and one by one update all of them so that the, that the name on in that data traced back to the picture file. That's why my pictures weren't showing up because in that part of the code, mine just said image.png where in versus it should have said 0.png, 1.png for every rabbit. It needed to be directed to that picture so that they were tied together. So having someone like Corn Pop is really important because he was able to write a script that took all thousand of those files and knew where the code was. And you just push one button and it goes and updates all those files for us. Saved us crazy amounts of time. Um, But other than that, you know, my advice is like, you know, A, have some people on your team that know, you know, how this stuff works on a level that, you know, even if they're not, you know, on your founding team or whatever, like nowhere to go, like the Stractors Discord or like the Bobby Rabbit's Discord, we're trying to, you know, be available to help answer these questions. You know, you got to have people that you can go to in your network that can help you figure these issues out when they happen. And then other than that, like if you're making your own NFT, like the community aspect is like so uh, under-recognized right now so like that was kind of from day one like we constantly were saying you know every decision we ever had to make was like you know what would be best for the community yeah you know, when and just for the sake of transparency uh, and then i'll let bobby you know answer the question is for example when solana took a nosedive a couple weeks ago you know we priced this out a month or two ago when solana was at like 150 dollars 
per, per coin. And so like the projections of how much money we were going to bring in from Mint Day, you know, were based on $150 per Solana. So A, you know, we do need to make certain amount of money because we have these things that we have to do to make Bobby Rabbit's valuable. Like we got to be able to pay somebody to help us develop a video game or pay somebody to help us, you know, create a cartoon. There's going to be costs associated with advertising. There's going to be costs associated with merchandise. Like right now, like we're not making very much money off of the merchandise store because of how it's set up. Like for us to make money, we got to invest money. Like if, if we want to like print, you know, clothing in bulk, like you're going to have to pay for, you know, where are we going to store that? Like, where's the inventory going to be held? So you got to treat it like a business. Um, so part of the decision was like, you know, are we going to have enough money and like, what can we do about it? And ultimately we decided to not do anything because it was not in the best interest of our community to all of a sudden wow. be like, you know, instead of a thousand rabbits, we could have minted 2000 rabbits and, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll get twice as much money, but for every person, their rabbit now has half the value because there's a whole nother thousand of them out there. So we didn't want to devalue anybody's stake on them. We also could have upcharged more for public. Like we initially communicated it was going to be half a Solana for pre-sale and then one Solana for public minting. You know, we could have easily just said, you know, everybody who's in it right now, like we'll honor the pricing we told you. Like at that point, every person that was involved could you know, had full opportunity to be whitelisted for pre-sale. We could have said, you know, pre-sale is still half a Solana, but anybody from today on out, they're public that, you know, if they end up on the public sale, it's going to be two Solana. You know, wow. so these are like decisions we had to make. But because I think we put the community's interest first and said, you know, you know, that might confuse people that could cause issues like, you know, how will we look if we do that to the community? You know, I think we made the right decision because, you know, we yeah, maybe we left tens of thousands of dollars on the tables for our personal gain in the immediate future. But because we made that decision for the community and the, you can see how how, you know, engaged our community is and how much they stand behind us in the long run. You know, we're going to we'll personally make way more money because of that decision. And everybody here will benefit from that decision and make money like every person that's invested in Bobby Rabbits right now, like. We understand that that you guys all put money into this. And so it's our duty to do the best we can to make sure that your investment into this project, you know, is handled from, you know, a proper business perspective. So if you're making your own NFT, like, you got to realize that, you know, this is not just a way for you to get a quick cash grab. It's not like selling a painting. You know, we're kind of on the hook to the community and we owe that to, you know, the people that are behind us to you know, make decisions in their best interest and involve them in that decision making process. So that's kind of my two cents on, you know, what went into the thought process behind all the decisions we had to make getting started. Thank you so much, man, that is so valuable. I have already just from this project seen such an example of both the benefits of really putting the community first and obviously the drawbacks, but how you've continued to do so. Um, Bobby, I would love to also hear from you any advice for an NFT artist getting started. Yeah, uh, my my advice is to get started, period. <laughs> get started and be very, very patient. Like, I don't want to sound too general, but as artists like we hear the same thing all the time i feel like um and yeah w there's one good thing or there's one good aspect out of this project is that like we are capable of making money off of this project right in an and in, in the nft space even if you're semi successful at it but realize what brian and tyler just said that is a huge part of running a successful nft um as far as like the art though when you're as an artist we want to be proud of our our product we want to be successful we want something that's going to represent us for a very 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 long time digital art is going to be it's going to outlast our lives you yeah. know there's there's canvas work that you can do and you know there's potential things that it can that can happen that'll wipe out all of your canvas work but digital stuff is going to be out there forever so be do something that you're proud of and be extremely patient but I, I mean i've had artists that reached out to me 
and they've asked me like how I started and you know what do I need and it just what you need is just to do your research first of all like do you really want to be involved in the NFT space and why ask yourself why you want to be involved in the NFT space does it fascinate you because that's where I started it started it fascinated me I was under I was like what is this like I just started diving into it and asking everybody what an NFT was back in uh, last January, not this year, but last year, and no one had an answer. And that was where I started, started asking questions, started to, to do my research. But the art came way later. And Brian and Tyler, they're right, because, you know, it's not just something that you're just going to jump in and just be like, okay, I made a quick buck off this. Trust me, like, I did the OpenSea thing. I went on OpenSea. I put some art on there, and I was like, "Oh, cool! This is a, like this is how you do it." I think I spent like six hundred bucks, like getting my art on OpenSea, and I got like maybe eight likes on each one. Like yes. it's like that's pretty much it. That's as far as it got, and it was like not a verified collection or something. Like I didn't understand or fully grasp what this like space was, um, but. Again, I didn't do my research, and I also hadn't met Brian at that time to kind of school me on the business part. Like, yeah. it's not necessarily just art, but yeah, it is a business. It is a stock, and yeah, when you do a project that we're doing, um, it's it community driven. So you have to you have to kind of you have to humble yourself too, like. You know, sometimes like there's going to there might be a um, you, you might put out a product that is cool, looks cool. You it's um, skillfully sound, but then you have like haters out there, especially with the art community. Um, mm -hmm. It's not very accepted right now. Uh, there's a lot of like artists that are still kind of like, you know, they're hating on the space. It's a cash grab. It's this. It's that. It's a sellout, you know, but really, here's what I get out of that. I have I've been an independent artist without a nine to five for over a year and a half now, straight uh, just working art. And the fact that this space is allowing me to eat and continue to pay my yeah. for my my art supplies and continue to paint and continue to be creative, then call me a sellout because my my goal is to be creative. My goal is to help other artists in this space. Or beyond the space, maybe just to be in the art world. Like, if I can help anybody that I can in this mm -hmm. in this art in this space, then I'll do it. Even it, art, art, regardless. Like, you know, it's very clickish. Um, coming from two different cities in, in the art world, in the art scene, in San Diego and in LA. Like, it's if you're going to be a successful artist in San Diego, then you might as well start working on painting. Um, boat scenes and beach scenes because that's what everybody yeah. hangs in the house right you want to be successful artists in la you got to like do a lot of pop art or you got to find yourself in a click it's all clickish you know and it's really hard it's very very hard to break into a scene no matter wow. how how you know how good you are it doesn't even matter you know um so i i see that and it sucks like i see younger artists struggle and it sucks. And I wish that I had an establishment or a gallery or something that I could, you know, bring like friends of mine or rising artists that are that really want to be successful in this space and, you know, succeed. Because that I think is more important. I think like, yeah, it's important for for people to not give up on creating. Yeah. And, you know, and find a way of being successful in it. So yeah, it, it it is a good space to to um to dabble in and if you are then make sure you create something that you know you feel very proud of, um you're excited about. Be humbled by it because some people are going to hate on you even if you know even if your fellow artist friends, your art friends are not going to dig it, they're not going to you know vibe with it and you don't need those people either anyway, you know, like, um, but yeah, it's important to, to um, think about why you're getting into it because yeah, this is going to be a project that I, me and Brian and Tyler are going to be involved with for a very long time. Be yeah. And it's, and it's all community driven. It's not like I did an art piece, I sold it and it's done with like, 
this thing is like gonna be going around for a while and it depended on the success through the community which you know I'm, I'm really proud of it our community is so small yeah in respect to a lot of other communities like we're so small um and i think that's awesome i rather have this small community to give back to who really appreciated the art from day one and we can give them the best we can it's better to give the best we can to these to a, such a small group than trying to give to like five thousand holders like this is this is awesome i love this project because of that and i've met new friends in this space like it's pretty wild i think the um the whole rarity tool debacle is like a perfect little microcosm of that too like a like you got to listen to your community like it was so funny all these people were like when are we going to have rarity when are we going to have rarity and then <laughs> you know tyler um corn pop was like he was like you know what like screw rarity tools we can i can build this myself and he did he you know he put a bunch of work into it which is super cool we'll have it you know when when we have it but we, he got it working and we put it out there and a bunch of people were like hold up hold up don't release it yet and so, you know, we all thought that everybody wanted that. And we all thought it was cool because now you can check what rank your rabbit is. But we stuck to our plan, like this being community driven, we put it to a vote and it was overwhelming that the community wanted to wait till they were all minted to have that. So we listened and we did it um, with certain bigger projects. You know, you go on these discords and you got 50,000 people there, but only like, you know, 10,000 of these will be minted, sometimes even smaller. It's just like, well, you know. 80% of the people on this discord are not even going to be have a financial interest in the project. So like they're, you know, a like, why do they get to vote and be like, it's just such a mess when you have a community full of people that are just kind of one foot in one foot out versus our community. It may be small, but every person is engaged and they have a voice like, you know, I feel like that was a perfect example of like, if you know, the people that are part of this Bobby rabbits community, like the way that we structured it and designed it and like, to continue to navigate the different turns throughout this project to make sure our community stayed, you know, engaged in the right, you know, consisting of the right people was like when stuff like this happens, you know, we can put it to a vote and pretty quickly, I feel like the voice, the voice of our community can be heard. And it's very clear, you know, what the community wants and all the people that influence that decision are people that have a vested interest in this project. You don't just have a bunch of random people like causing confusion. So that was really cool to see. And, you know, the way that it turned out was kind of a perfect example of like this, you know, this roadmap working the way that we intended it to work where the community can have a say and their voices be heard. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think that you have all done such a really inspiring job of your transparency and your focus on the community. And throughout this whole conversation, I've been pretty interested to hear the number of little challenges. I think our, uh, I think our host is, uh -oh. is busy at the moment. There you go. No, we can hear you now. Oh, oh, yeah. I, sorry about that. No problem. Um, there you go. Damn. Shoot. Am I still in? Yep, you, we yep. can hear you now. Okay. Lost you it's the, the, my connection is a little spotty at times. But, uh, yeah, no, so I just wanted to really thank you guys for being so transparent in both the challenges you faced and the decisions that you've made throughout it all. I was wondering if there were any moments or accomplishments in particular that throughout this time of ups and downs have made you the proudest of being on this project. I'd love to hear from each of you. Oh man, there's been so many. Um, there's been from getting the Discord started, Brian sending me my, my, my the first invitation to the Discord. Like I take all those little like milestones or little goals as a milestone. I should say like every little like step we took forward I think is I'm very proud of. Um, we told ourselves we had it. We had a conversation. Brian said, "Look at you get you get the artwork done. We'll be up and running in two months." And I took that and I ran with it. I started working my butt off and started do doodling, doing what I needed to do to get it to get this thing going. I it was weird. Like 
we don't he was already in Atlanta I think at the time and I we I, I couldn't see what he was doing like I didn't know if he was working as wow. hard as I was or you know vice versa like he probably didn't know if I was working as hard you know but it's just so crazy that we both were working on our thing um so I was proud of the fact that you know I sent him the character he was pumped about it so we came up with the name through text like I told him was like I was thinking Bobby Rabbits he's like bro I put that in the you know I, mm-hmm. I, I, I titled it Bobby Rabbits like it's so crazy you know like that like little things every single step like that is a milestone to me in my eyes I was proud of that the discord our first member um you know our setting up our Instagram and getting like our first 10 uh, followers and then oh. Twitter did the same thing like every little thing that we got every 10 every five every one um has been a, a pretty dope accomplishment and this is our first project this is crazy like I think people should understand like if they're um having any concerns you know whether or not our is this project going to be successful or are they going to are they good people or are they going to rug pull it's like this is crazy because we started with zero everything we started with zero followers <sighs> across the board across social media we started with zero people in the discord we didn't have we didn't have like a a, a hype up to get into discord we didn't have a hype up to get into social media like we started all at the same time and the fact that the people the community started coming together while like while i was still drawing the traits like it, every single one of these every single member in the community to me is is a is an accomplishment that i uh, that i'm proud of like i'm proud of the two guys that i have on this like that i'm in this team with like have adding tyler to the team like that's just a whole wild situation and then the effort and hard work that brian's been putting in like day in and day out and you know doing the discord and i know all that stuff is tedious it's time consuming but Every single like thing that we have completed and checked off, every box that we checked off, to me and my eyes is a is a huge, huge uh, accomplishment that I'm that I'm excited about every day. Yeah, it's it's really cool to see like certain results too, because um, as I'm sure like Tyler will mention, like when I was making music, like I was making beats and stuff, and I thought they sounded awesome. When I was doing photography and videos for people, I thought they were awesome. But, like, I never got, like, any legit following out of it. And so it, it almost came as a surprise, like, when Bobby Rabbits started getting put out there, when I would pull up the web traffic on the back end of our website and see that we were having people log in from, like, co- like dozens of countries around the world. I was like, what is happening? This is so crazy. And then just seeing people so engaged with it, like... Like, or we have, a, you know, we have, we mentioned some um, Bobby Rabbits of our own. And, you know, we, people said we were crazy when we talked about giving away a hundred for free when we only have a thousand. People are like, wait, so you're giving away 10% of your whole collection for free? Like, yeah, good luck. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, yeah, and that's not all. There's more. Like, we're also going to have another hundred that we're going to give away for free for promotional stuff. So we're actually giving away like 20% of our collection for free. People were just like, oh, my God, like, you guys are complete idiots. But, you know, that it wasn't all about the money. And I think it was really important to have a team that all has the same values as me. Like, you know, I've I've been in places in life where I was, you know, I work, when I was working in finance, I was making good money. But, you know, I was very unhappy. You know, it's not all about money. So, like, some of the biggest wins for me, like, the proudest moments are seeing, like, the change that is that we're able to, like, the impact that we're able to make. So, you know, earlier today, like we have these rabbits that we earmarked, we set aside for, you know, promotional value and stuff. There was a guy in our community that just he couldn't afford one, but he seemed really into the project. He's like the exact type of person that we want in our community to represent us. And so, you know, I just told him to DM me and I thought it was very moving that he thought I was asking him to DM me so that I could tell him to like take his rabbit profile picture down because he didn't. Aww. I was like, I was like, no, dude. I was like, send me your wallet address. Like, I got, I got you. This one's on the house. And so now he's part of our community. And he was just so grateful for it. Like, you know, I've been in situations in my life. You know, I, I had to get, you know, I had to get sober. I went through like a substance abuse issue over, you know, starting a couple of years ago. Went through all these, you know, programs to get sober and learn how to be a better human being and 
you know, worked on my moral compass. And like, you know, I was told, um, if you want to have good self-esteem, you've got to do esteemable acts. And so like, mm-hmm. that's always stuck with me, like do something esteemable and it will give you self-esteem. And that's like invaluable. So those little moments where you see someone like grateful to something I did, that really was no big deal to me. Like, yeah, I was so broke, like a couple months ago, like I was like having to make a single can of soup last for more than one meal, which is crazy. But, you know, I, I've been there, I've seen the best and worst of life. And so, you know, when, now that we do have the ability to give back to people and like, you know, make someone at the very least, like feel good about something, you know, it, it was really meaningful for me to have to have been able to do that for somebody. You know, I didn't have to go out of my way to do it. Like, we could have, you know, given one of these rabbits away for free through like a giveaway or something it was you know it was a no-brainer for me to you know this this person deserves this like I don't know what's going on in his life but like he can't afford to be a part of this project but he's the exact type of person that we want to be a part of our community so like yeah no-brainer and like those are the biggest wins for me is like getting to see the gratitude from people getting to see other people so excited like that brings me a lot of self-esteem because I feel like we did something really good for the world that made the world a better place. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Corn Pop, too, any of your proudest accomplishments or moments in the project? I don't know that I have anything in particular to add to, to what's been said by both Bobby and Brian. Um, yeah. I, I'm blown away by the community. That's what surprises me, the, the just the range of people we see. I mean, it truly embodies this, like, this street vibe that the art brings in from the beginning this misfits this you know kind of the downtrodden not that all of us yeah. are downtrodden but you know we come from different walks of life mm-hmm. none of us like know each other you know most of us don't know each other where you know some of us are have been successful in life some of us have seen really terrible lows and we've all come together under this one roof and i think the street art embodies that and this community and i i think the the biggest thing i've noticed is there's a serious lack of toxicity within our community and that was one of my biggest worries is when you get because if you see this nft space it's full of like a lot of scammers it's full of a lot of you know people who are just out for a quick buck it's it's full of people who don't care it's digital the the person is often removed from that But I go into this Discord and I'll share a piece of my music and I'll get people to say, hey, I really like this. And somebody will show their art. And I'm like, wow, people are doing amazing things. And everybody just props each other up. I get so much energy to push into my own projects, into this project, just from watching what goes on and the kind of people we've you know, brought into this community that have that have just, you know, wandered in and we've created a family that to me just blows my mind. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Speaking of uh, like other people's projects and stuff, like our biggest in-house artist KG in here. Yeah. I got to make sure that we, that we've gotten KG his Bobby rabbit, but it's so cool. I love every time, you know, I'll pop in there. Like that's another win or something I'm proud of. It's really cool to see like from the very beginning, we had people like, like him that I go in our little community artwork section and I'm just like it's so cool like that it inspired other people to you know create their own variations of it you know he sent us the other day he made a bobby rabbit out of like clay I was like that's so cool so it feels really fun to see that type of stuff and how excited other people are getting about it yeah it really has impacted my life too I know I speak for so many yeah, it's, it's just been fun to see everybody come together. Well, it's yeah. crazy because, you know, I come in as, from, a, from a music production background. And here I see, you know, m- musicians all over the place posting this awesome music. And, and within the community, I've paired up with Ledge and we're making mm. a, an EP together. And, I, and this, this just happened because we both found our way into this community. And to me, that's that's just beautiful that's awesome like that's what this is all about i really couldn't agree more i think that's such a nice note to wrap up on but before we do i would also like to see if maybe we could get any 
either sneak peeks or just a sense of something to look forward to because I I always am filled with anticipation of all these things to come. Any even words, phrases, maybe give us a taste, a hint. Um, I guess I could say something. Uh, yeah, like uh, there's there's work. Um, I think I was talking about it before people started coming in, but it was there's there's a bit of work going on in the Warren as far as um, you know where these uh, rabbits are. You're gonna have a better imagination and visual uh, and background of the rabbits and where you know your imagination will it'll be it's it's basically what i'm work what i'm trying to say is we i have been working on things to put the rabbits in a actual space like in a in a, in a world where um if we do when when we do get into the metaverse that we'll be able to see these these rabbits actually physically move around uh, and you know become i guess um, an avatar that uh, we can use in the future. So that's kind of something that I'm working on, um, giving more life to the rabbits and giving more life to their environment. Oh, I'm really excited to see that. I've seen bits and pieces on Instagram, and I really just can't wait to see more every single day. I get excited about logging into the Discord for the community, for the artwork, every single aspect and really i need to thank each and every one of you in this community and the leadership because bobby brian tyler you three have impacted more than you could possibly realize yeah thank you. i i think um i mean yeah i was super to see the bobby rabbit legs <laughs> oh yeah we have the top half and so yeah like what bobby was saying it's really cool to start to see what's going to happen because they're more than just these little profile pictures from the shoulders up like you know we really are working on like how can we make this into a cartoon like we're visualizing it. like when i think of like a bobby rabbit's cartoon i'm thinking like you know these other like just iconic cartoons you know you have like bojack horseman and rick and morty and you mm -hmm. know that adult level of like comedy you know where these you know we really want to embody that street life culture and the vibe and like we've said these rabbits they're like their personalities based on looking at them they're kind of misfits they're kind of you know a little bit mischievous but at the same time like they have good hearts so it's like you know we we show that through the community and the things that we're doing um, so it's, that'll be kind of fun to see that storyline, um, you know, kind of evolve as we get more into that. And then, um, basically one other thing to look forward to is, you know, we brought, we're bringing other people into this project that are going to be able to help us do really big things. You know, we reached out this, there's this guy, Gabe Galt, um, who I don't know how many of you noticed he joined our discord the other day. Yeah. Um, you know, he's really crazy with this metaverse art stuff. Like he, he's like, the, as far as I know, like the main like Oculus painter I know of where, you know, he uses that King Spray app in the Oculus to do these crazy murals, but they're in virtual reality. So, you know, we reached out to him. He's now a Bobby Rabbit. He's got one of his own and yeah. he, you know, he has connections with King Spray. So, you know, we looked into that. I, re I emailed King Spray weeks ago before we even communicated that this was something that we were looking into. And, you know, we wanted to work with them because that game came out years ago. And I come to find out through, you know, our new friend Gabe that the guys that made that game, you know, there's not they kind of have their own jobs now. There's, they have like other nine to five jobs. So that project has been sitting around and like we're pushing, we're like, yo, like, let's revamp this game. We need, like, this King Spray game round two, but we're going to, we want to brand it Bobby Rabbits and add missions and things like that. So we've got some really big ideas, and we're starting to, you know, do the work required to network with the people that can make those things happen. So, you know, it's one of the reasons why we're giving away this Oculus um, when we, you know, hit hit those, um, when, we, when we get that 900th Rabbit minted, it'll say 700 out of 800 on the thing because we already have, you know, our first 200 were minted for the treasury and the giveaways. Yeah. But, you know, once we get within those last 100, you know, we're going to give away an Oculus. And, like, the reason why we chose the Oculus is because, like, that is part of, like, the future of Bobby Rabbits. Like, we want to have a game, like an Oculus game that is a Bobby Rabbits game, you know, using that engine 
that that spray paint game is built on. And if they're not going to do it, we could find another developer. But, you know, we we've got a lot of big things that are going on in the real world outside of, you know, the, you know, NFT marketplace that's going to try to, you know, that we want to make our NFTs more valuable. You know, we want the NFT part to be kind of like the core where we come to like build community. But, you know, the Bobby Rabbit's brand is going to extend to a lot of other things in the real world that are going to create actual business, actual cash flow that we can, you know, convert a fraction of those profits and give back to the NFT holders through this smart contract technology. That is so exciting. I can't believe all that's to come, all that you have created already. It's such an innovative space that's growing every day. Thank you so much for your time, your energy to answer all of these questions. I know I feel like I've learned a lot. Oh, and I believe there is another piece before we end the night. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I mentioned earlier in the Discord that we wanted to do something a little bit fun. I'm going to need Bobby and Tyler to help me here. Um, so Bobby and then Tyler, just tell me like a number one through eight. Just pick a random number, one through eight. Three. Uh, seven. All right. So Ledge and Digital Photobot. We're going to get send you guys each a free Bobby Rabbit NFT. Nice. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Nice. We wanted to reward the folks that popped into the Discord. I mean, into the Twitter space. So I said I wanted to give away two of those guys. So <laughs> yeah, you guys nice. are yes. lucky number three and seven. That's also, awesome. Can, can we quick get a little emoji thing going for our wonderful moderator? Hillary yeah, Hillary, thank you so, Let's uh, give her thank some, you so uh, much. Give her some Yo, peace signs, that. maybe a 100. <laughs> yeah, all the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Good job, Hillary. You killed it. <laughs> thank you. It truly has been my pleasure. I have loved learning, and I still have so many more questions that I know we can keep answering and learning together. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your evening and definitely reach out to any of us with questions. Thank you again. Yeah, you guys, if you guys have any questions um, and if you guys want us to expand on anything to that, maybe yeah. we didn't answer clearly, um, yeah, just reach out to us. Let us know and we'll, we'll give you more detail. Um, as you can see or tell, like, especially hearing Brian just finish up right now, like, um, we're we're like being very serious and aggressive like when we talk about like you know the future of our our project like we are doing these things like every we're full steam ahead yeah we're focused on getting more people in the discord and finishing up the public sale but really like we're multitasking like crazy right now like i cannot stop like creating for this i have um seven paintings that i'm supposed to ship out and i haven't even st i boxed up one today and everything else before that it's been all bobby rabbits like i'm fully invested like and so are brian so is brian and so is tyler like i really appreciate the team i have because of that type of um enthusiasm that they have and hard work and if i'm awake like at 10 11 texting these two guys they're on different like i'm like the time zones are so different i know for them it's probably like two in the morning or something i don't know but they're always up working like it's crazy so uh yeah i'm really proud of our team like i'm really thankful for you guys like to have that type of uh, passion like i do i feel like i can be very passionate i feel like you guys have that too so i appreciate that big time Absolutely. And I think we should definitely do more of these like Twitter spaces and in the future, you know, we can set them up and maybe even do them on like a weekly basis and invite the community to participate more in the future ones as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll, you know, obviously we'll all be um, hanging out in the Warren and on a discord and we can kind of continue to strategize and figure out how we're going to best build this community to, um, you know, really go toe to toe with some of these other big projects on the Solana marketplaces. Agreed. Awesome. Thank you so much again. Cool. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, everybody. And yeah, we'll, we'll see it. you all in the Warren. 
Good night, Mr. Corn Pop. Make sure to pet that soul bot. Good night for oh, us. I, I will do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, guys. All right, man. Take it easy, guys.